What is the main purpose of an action figure? Some people may give you different answers. The sculpt, the size, the looks, the accessories. But to me, the most important part of an action figure is the articulation. Yes, I said the articulation. Well, of course it is. That's why they're called action figures. If your figure can't move, what's even the point? You might as well just go by a statue. And if there's anyone this applies to, it's Spider-Man. Spider-Man is the most physically expressive superhero probably ever. This is a guy you need to have jumping, swinging, crawling, or doing a combination of the three. Your Spider-Man action figure needs articulation. It's something even Toy Biz got right in the 90s. And since then, there have been many Spider-Man figures who have never forgotten this important rule. But there's only one figure that could be deemed the most super posable Spider-Man figure ever. And, um, wow, this is a little embarrassing. Um, despite my vast collection of Spider-Man action figures, this is one I don't have. What? No, dude! Hey, what's up, man? Uh, l listen, I I'm gonna, I'm gonna need a favor. N no, no, don't hang up. Don't, don't fucking hang up. Look, man, I, I need this video done and I don't have the figure. You're kind of the expert, so I was hoping maybe you'd help me out, man. No, no, I'm not gonna pay you. No, don't hang up. Don't hang up. Listen, I'll literally do anything you want, man. It's literally anything. Yeah. So, you gonna do it? Do what with maple syrup? Hey guys, it's Finn Aiden here, and thank you so much to Mr. Criminal for letting me talk about my absolute favorite figure of all time, the amazing Yamaguchi 1.0 Spider-Man. Spider-Man 1.0 was announced all the way back in 2016, and at that time there had only been one attempt by Revel Tech to make Marvel's most popular character, and that came in the form of the Raimi Spider-Man 3 Spidey. Revel Tech at this time had been known for their unique and advanced articulation system that allowed for an increased range and posability. This came with a cost, however, as the joints on their early figures could make the sculpts kind of have an awkward look to them, as well as making the figures hard to put into vanilla poses. Their sculpts could be awkward at times, and not always match the source material. The overall visual look of a Kyoto figure was an acquired taste for many, and a turnoff for even more people. However, this began to change when Kyoto introduced Marvel to the Amazing Yamaguchi line in October of 2016, with Deadpool being its first release. Reception to the figure was extremely positive, and that would continue to be the case with the second release in the line, the Amazing Yamaguchi 1.0 Spider-Man. He was announced in 2016, with prototypes being seen at New York Comic Con that year. People were impressed to see a Spider-Man figure that looked decent in vanilla poses, but when it was put into its more dynamic poses, people, including myself, went absolutely wild. This was a 1 12th scale Spider-Man that was able to hit poses people couldn't even imagine. Its posability was insane, and its range of movement was so intense that it made everybody so excited for this figure to drop. And in early January 2017, I and many other people got to experience it firsthand. Getting your first Revel Tech figure in hand can be a learning experience, as they don't always move like any other figure. Learning the joints and how to achieve crazy poses is always an adjustment and can really take some time, but it's really rewarding in my opinion. Once you can pose a Revel Tech well, you can pose anything well. The 1.0 came packed with various hands, webs, and interchangeable eyes, something that I had never seen before on a figure. I love the options they chose for eyes too. They give you a perfect size for the regular eyes, but the squinting eyes are probably my favorite. No other Spider-Man has a look quite like this in my opinion. Something about it is just so menacing. The textured webs are fantastic and the paint is just great. The blue on his legs sparkles and shines in the light in just the right way. It gives it some really nice texture. Now he's not perfect. For example, the short webs have this like overhanging bit of web that extends past where the web plugs into his hand and when it's tilted down, it just looks kind of weird. And the shoulders on the figure can be a challenge to make look good in photos, especially vanilla poses. But when I got the figure in hand in 2017, I did not care about any of that. I finally had a figure that could hit any pose I wanted. Want Spider-Man doing a crawling pose with his arm actually extended in front of him? 1.0 can do it. Want Spider-Man doing a deep squat with both hands on the ground? 
want the most twisted, out of control web swinging pose, 1.0 has you covered. I spent the next year or so pumping out photos of this guy weekly, and six years later I shoot this guy regularly to this day. He has a very stylized look, which I understand isn't for everyone, but for me it is absolutely perfect, especially for a figure like this. People always claim the Mayfax or the Sentinels, the Goat Spidey, but to me, the Rebel Tech Amazing Yamaguchi 1.0 Spider-Man holds the most special place in my heart and is my favorite figure of all time. Damn, bro, you actually like this crap? Uh, yeah, bro, did you not just hear me gush about this figure? Ah, uh, yes, the Amazing Yamaguchi Spider-Man. This figure's posability was simply on another level. The poses this figure could do would be impossible for any other action figure. But for all the articulation this figure had, he lacked in proportions. The figure had style, which to some people makes him look really wonky. He's got a little head, skinny arms, and really thick thighs. And while I personally don't mind, a lot of people just didn't like the look of this guy, and you really can't blame them. So fast forward half a decade. Half a decade? 2017 was six years ago. What the fuck? Anyway, existential crisis aside, the figure we will be looking at today is the Reveltech Amazing Yamaguchi Spider-Man 2.0. And like the name suggests, this is Reveltech's second attempt at the wall crawler. And it seems this figure is going to bring back the posability from the first release, while also fixing the aesthetics of the figure, delivering what quite possibly might be one of the best Spider-Man figures ever. So here's a look at the packaging the figure comes in. And it's surprisingly simple. That's quite surprising. Here's the box for Reveltech's Deku figure. It's quite the bold packaging. This goes for their Marvel characters too, look at that. It's literally a collage of comic panels put together. But now with this Spider-Man, it kind of just looks like an iPhone box. Quite the minimalist design here. It's like when McDonald's rebranded all of their restaurants. And the Spider-Man logo is the Disney version for some reason. It doesn't make a difference to me. You guys already know how I feel about boxes. And the figure comes with instructions, so in case you don't know how to use a fucking toy, then this is for you. The first thing you'll notice about this figure is that he looks a little bit different than usual. And that's because this figure is not based on the classic suit. This figure is based on the Spider Armor Mark IV. And this costume first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 4 Number 1 in 2015. This was right after the Superior Spider-Man storyline, where Peter Parker was the head of his own company, Parker Industries. So instead of a Halloween costume made with Aunt May's sewing machine, it is now a high-tech, multi-million dollar suit. And as you can see, the figure's paint job reflects this really well. He's so fucking shiny! The red is shiny and metallic. The blue is a shiny color as well. These are the only parts on the figure with texture because the red portions are made to look like metal plating. Instead of the curved web pattern he usually has, the web pattern on this figure is made with straight lines, and I really like that about the design. And the webbing actually has some panel line detail in it, which is appreciated. Here's a look at the spider symbol, and if you had any doubts this was based on the Mark IV, BAM! Literally the exact spider symbol right down to the light green outline. It looks white on my camera, but trust me there's a green hue to it, and it's also on the eyes. These parts are supposed to light up, but I understand why they couldn't do that. It would have been cool if they used some glow-in-the-dark paint. Unless they already did. Okay guys, we're gonna test this right now. I gotta charge it up a little bit, you know. Charge. Let's go to a place you're all very well aware of. The closet. No, no, the figure can't glow in the dark. But now we gotta talk about the proportions. This figure isn't really buff more than he is toned. This guy's muscle definition is crazy. And honestly, I think it's great. You know, the Spider-Man figures have been a bit smooth lately. So having the buff Spider-Man is fucking awesome. She was a poem. I'm huge Spider-Man. And yes, the proportions are way better than the first figure. They're not perfect, obviously. He's still got the thick thighs going on. And his feet are really small and are shaped weird. What is that, a triangle? And the shoulder joints are still pretty exposed. But when you look at the figure, your mind doesn't go, wow, that's a really fucked up Spider-Man. Your mind goes, wow, that is a really cool Spider-Man figure. Overall aesthetics, I think Revel Tech did a great job. 
Yeah! Do this figure have accessories? Oh, this figure got accessories. The hands all come on this tray. You get the punchy punchies, the relaxed hands, the open hands, the wall crawling hands, the fucking hands on the floor hands, and y'all already know. These are probably the best sculpted flippers I've ever seen. In fact, I think they put the Mafex hands to shame. These aren't your standard thwippers though. You may not notice it at first, but there is actually a hole in this hand. And these are for the webline accessories. So you literally just plug them in the hand and that's it. You can have Spider-Man shoot the web, you know, as he does. But then you look at the fists and there's a hole in those too. So you can plug these webs in the fists and now it looks like Spider-Man's swinging from the webs. Other Spider-Man figures have you take out the hand and have the webs sandwiched in there with a loop, or they give you separate grabbing hands so you can hold the webs, but not this figure. And then you get a set of web wings. There are holes on the figure's back and you literally just plug them in and there you go. You do need to adjust them accordingly, but dude, this is sick. Kind of looks like a butterfly. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you guys I like butterflies? And then you get a set of web effects. These plug into the thwippers, and now you got Spider-Man spraying a web. I think this is the first time a Spider-Man's come with an accessory like this. Usually Spider-Man's just come with strings. You can plug these in the back too, if you wanted like relaxed web wings. And all of these web parts are made of translucent green plastic. Very nice. Interchangeable eyes. Yes, you actually get three sets of eye lenses. Now to switch them out, you do need to pop off the head. And you see those? You're supposed to poke them out with this tool, which is included. And you literally just poke them out. Now, I recommend doing this over a flat surface like a table because these shits are small. If you do this over a carpet, they will get lost forever. No! I'm packing you an extra pair of shoes and your angry eyes, just in case. Along with those angry eyes, you also get a set of surprised eyes and a set of happy eyes. The great thing is you don't need to keep them together. So if you wanted to mix and match and create different expressions, you totally can. And finally, you get the Reveltech stand. It's pretty much the same deal as your Mafex stands, except this is way better. You get the clip, which is nice, but you also get a peg attachment so that you can plug the stand straight into the figure's back. And then you get this magnetic piece. So you plug the stand arm into here, and the idea is you're supposed to put this on a metal surface, which should be relatively easy. So if we take a look at the instructions, which you're clearly supposed to read, that's a uh, that's my bad. There's a specific position the stand needs to be in in order to support Spider-Man. It's an interesting feature, but it works. There's also this clear spider sense effect. It's just a picture printed on clear plastic, which you can put on the figure. And if you're thinking to yourself, hey, don't you have the figure? Why won't you show us the accessory? Why are you showing us these PNG images? And I'm glad you asked, because the only way you could get this spider sense accessory is if you pre-ordered from the Kyoto website. The problem is, it's Japanese only. So if you really wanted the effect, you had to order off someone else, and they would most likely upcharge. It's a real smooth brain moment on their part. But all the accessories the figure does come with are amazing. You can get this figure in quite the expressive poses, thanks in large part to the amazing articulation, which by the way, is absolutely nuts. The head is on a double ball joint, already lots of range there, and then you combine that with the second ball joint at the bottom of the neck? Dude, that is actually insane. These are not your standard shoulder joints. First of all, they move outward literally all the way, and they swing forward. You can get this figure to hug himself if you really wanted to. Instead of armpit joints, this figure has shoulder blade joints. So you can move him back a fair amount and forward. You can even get these flaps to cover up the spider symbol, which is actually kind of gross, but we're gonna let it slide. You have a very interesting bicep swivel. Here's something that's a little crazy. Uh, this figure's got a single jointed elbow, but there's a ball joint right on the top of the forearm. So not only can the elbows bend in all the way, you can fucking move his forearm, man. That's insane. 
And then he's got, you know, your standard wrists. Then he's got the diaphragm joint, almost infinite range here. And look at this. He crunches forward so much. And there's a ball joint at the waist too. When you get them both working together, oh man. The white pants, should have worn the white pants. The Spider-Man figure crunches forward for once. Thank you. Fuck you! Then he's got these ball jointed hips. And instead of a thigh swivel, it's more of a thigh joint. These just help the legs move outward so we can do the splits. And again, like the elbows, he actually has a single jointed knee, but then he actually has a joint right here on the calf. We have fucking calf articulation. Revel Tech, you beautiful bastards. So the single jointed knee bends in a fair amount, but then you bend it with the calf joint and his legs literally go in all the way. And then he's got the standard ankle joint and the toe joints. So uh, does this figure have good articulation? Um, you know what? I think it's pretty good. Any ludicrous Spider-Man poses you can think of, this figure could probably do. You want Spider-Man perched up? He can do it. You want Spider-Man crouched down with both hands on the floor? This figure could do it. You want Spider-Man in the Marvel vs. Capcom stance? It's fucking light work. The question shouldn't be, what poses can this Spider-Man figure get into? No, no, no. The question should be, what poses can't this Spider-Man do? Could we have the perfect Spider-Man figure right here, right now? Well... So, uh, I got a... I got a problem. Most of my problems are just nitpicks, okay? This little knee flap when you bend the knee, you know, could have been done a little better. Sometimes when I'm just messing with the figure, the eyes come out pretty easy. Or maybe I just need to wash my hands more. You know, it's little things like that. Not really a big deal, but what is a big deal is I have a major quality control issue with my figure. So the left knee on mine bends normally, but then on my right knee, yeah, that happens. For some reason, whenever I bend the knee in all the way on this leg, it just falls out. And I actually don't know what the problem is. You can see I put sticky tack where the joint is, but that didn't help at all. In fact, multiple times throughout this review, I get the figure in a pose and the leg just falls off. It's really annoying and a big problem. Lots of people do not have this problem, but a select few do, and I'm one of them. Wow, my luck with Spider-Man figures has been absolute shit recently. It's size comparison time. The figure stands at a tall 6 inches, so he'll fit in with any figure you have. Like Mr. Negative. The Mark IV was the main suit I used in the Spider-Man PS4 game. Why the suit did not come back in Spider-Man 2? I have no idea, and it makes me sad. Here he is next to Deku from My Hero Academia, also owned by Revel Tech, and actually my first figure from them. And here he is sandwiched next to the animated series Marvel Legends and the Mafex Spider-Man. And I know many of you want to know, which one of these do I think is the best Spider-Man? And my answer is... I don't fucking know. Here he is with the SH Figure Arts Spider-Man and the Figma Aqua. This ain't your dad's action figure, okay? If you think you can just pick up the figure and play with it like a Marvel Legend, it's not gonna happen. This is a Spider-Man for the big boys. There is a little bit of a learning curve on how the figure moves, but once you get the hang of it, this will be one of the best action figures you'll ever own. This Spider-Man can do the Kamehameha better than most Goku figures. That's the kind of articulation we have here. And if your figure does somehow come with a fucked up leg, most websites will give you a replacement. But I can't sit here and deny the absolute awesomeness that is the Revel Tech Spider-Man. The figure is currently being re-released, so if you want this figure, I'll have my link to Hobby Link Japan down in the description and comments. Because Hobby Link Japan actually has this figure for his retail price, about 60 bucks plus shipping, which is a lot better than many other big bad competitors out there. Oh. Now, I don't know if this is the best Spider-Man I have, but it is most definitely the most articulated action figure I own. Okay, bye.